Okay, well. This is, um, my second night playing Tex Murphy, uh, for the Pandora Directive. Last time on Pan on uh, Tex Murphy for the Pandora Directive, um, what did happen last time? Some bad stuff, I think. Um, You tracked down this guy that you had been hired to find, I think, named Malloy, and got knocked out. And you were supposed to go on a date the night that you got knocked out, so apparently, I'm sure that we're going to have to deal with the fallout for that. Um, but we're still in Malloy's room at the Ritz, I guess. Will you wake up there? So, uh, that's all well and good, I guess. Yeah, okay. Hmm. So what's the deal here? See if we can open these drawers. Hold on. Whoever furnished the Ritz must have bought credenzas in bulk. All right. Um. An old rusty hot plate. <laughs> the luxury of hotel living. I guess, Tex. Whatever you say. All right. Um. What now, brown cow? What else is in this room? I'm just a few awkward movements movements away from finding out. I guess I should check this trash can. It looks pretty empty, but nice wastebasket. Okay, I guess it's a nice wastebasket. That's all Tex has to say about it. That it's nice. Alright. What is in these drawers? Um, we got... Hmm. Envelope. An envelope. Let's examine it. Whoever wrote this has worse penmanship than I do. Either that or it's written in some weird language. Whoever wrote this has... Alright, so that's helpful. At least the guy who knocked me out didn't... had the good manners not to, um... had the good manners not to steal my money. Because I still have $1,800 in my pocket. Alright. Oh, there's something here. Have to look down to see it, though. There we go. It's a picture. Yeah, it's an old photograph. Who is it of? Uh, Regan, age three. Okay. Interesting. All right. Well.
I opened all the drawers, right? I think that's the case. Oh, no, I missed this. Yeah, it looks like a business card. This warehouse is just down the street from the Ritz. Okay. Maybe we can go there later. Anything interesting going on with this chair? Ah, oh, there seems to be something under the cushion. Damn. No spare change under here. Dude, you have $1,800 in your pocket. Calm down. Hmm. Looks like Malloy made a special llama pal back in his younger days. Ah, oh, memories of Peru. Hmm. Looks like Malloy made a special llama pal back in his younger days. All right. Cool. Um... Glad that Malloy made some Llama Pals. I'm a fan of Llama Pals. The label on the box says it was shipped from Mexico. Okay, so... What is inside this box, friends? Hmm. Airport of the Gods. My Uncle Marty owned a whole series of these books. Go-Karts of the Gods, Lunch of the Gods. Fascinating. I loved this book when I was a kid. Aliens, spaceships, mysterious structures. Then I grew up and realized it was all a load of crap. Oh. Well, I feel the same way about Harry Potter. Alright, um... Uh, what's on the floor here? What's on the bed? Play bub. Classy. Hmm, no play bub. I never look at these personally, but I do remember this one. It was the Amazon Woman Edition featuring 37 pages of full color pictures. Nice. Full color pictures? Is that unusual in this day and age? What's this? Looks like a scarf. What wizard says Nathan Bobathan, number one location for sick Harry Potter burns? I guess so. And in the future, everyone is impressed by color photos. Also, apparently true. If this game is to be believed. All right, so what's this letter thing? I wonder who this David Wright is. And more importantly, if Malloy's been to his cabin in Oregon. Um, January 28th, 2043. Dear Thomas, I was delighted to receive your letter after all these years. It sounds as though your work is progressing well. I look forward to having a few of our all-night discussions, just like in the old days. You're certainly welcome to stay at my cabin as long as you'd like. It's extremely secluded, a perfect place to get away from prying eyes. I can't meet you for at least a week, but I'll get there when I can. In the meantime, there's a key to the door under the brick by the front steps. I've come across an item I think you'll find quite interesting. I look forward to working out an exchange of information. The cabin is located exactly 8.4 miles south-southwest from a small town in Oregon called Salmonberry. They'll probably need to find a good map. It will be good to see you again. Sincerely, David Wright. Alright, cool. I guess I'll go there later. Um, it looks like there's a drawer. This looks like a pawn ticket of some kind. What's this? Looks like Rook did some business with Mr. Malloy. I wonder if Rook could let me redeem this receipt. Who am I kidding? He'll do anything if the price is right. Cool. I'll go bother Rook soon, I guess.
All right. Um, I think I'm pretty much done here. Let's put this crack on the wall. Guess nothing. Okay. Time to get out of here if I can. Oh man. Chelsea's gonna kill me. I didn't realize how long I was out. I don't know, 16 hours. <laughs> I was out cold straight through our dinner date. She's never gonna believe me. That is a long time to be passed off. Passed out, sir. Alright, so what's what's the deal here? I guess we can go talk to Chelsea, maybe. Panda Space Dan says he probably has some pretty serious brain damage. I would imagine so. Alright. Chelsea? Um, looks like you're not here. Well, I might as well check out Rook's Pawn Shop. I can give him that ticket that I got and try to redeem it. Rook's been running his pawn shop since sometime before the Eisenhower administration. He's a crusty, mean-spirited little troll who's rumored to have a heart of gold. Yeah, sure. He lets me buy things on credit occasionally, but then he nags me ruthlessly until I pay up. We get along all right, as long as I keep my bills settled. Hello, Rook. Up already, Murphy. And it isn't even lunchtime yet. Or am I still asleep? Having a horrible, horrible nightmare. Um... Yeah, you know, honesty is the best policy. I'll tell him about my own personal nightmare. You know what my nightmare is, Rook? <laughs> I don't know, maybe you can relate to this one. It's waking up 30 years older, a foot and a half shorter, and uh, dog ugly. <laughs> Very funny. At least I've never had a problem getting a woman to go out with me. Speaking of which, how's Chelsea? Uh... I will um, express gender-related confusion, I guess. I don't know what it is, Rook. It's these women. They're harder to figure out than a tax return. <laughs> what do you know about a tax return? Which reminds me, where's the money you owe me? Um... How much do I owe you? I don't know if I've got enough cash to pay you back right now. You see, I'm hoping to get a certain special someone to go out with me. <laughs> I love the expression oh, on his really? face. Anyone I know? You can't be talking about the young lady who uh, walked out on you last night. Um. I don't know. Why don't you tell me? You seem to know everything about everything. Well, all I know is she's too... Uh, I, I accidentally skipped that. All I know is she's too good for the likes of you. Well, I'll run naked through the streets before you two ever get together. Um, I will threaten him with a high society snub. Well, it's comments like that. They're going to keep your name off the guest list at our wedding. Bah! <laughs> even if Chelsea went insane and actually wanted to marry you, I doubt you could even afford the marriage license. Which reminds me, where is the money you owe me? Um, I'm going to taunt you. That's right here in my pocket. Yes, sirree, my pocket's crammed full of cash. <laughs> I could hardly walk over here. So, uh, what are you waiting for? Uh, oh, I, sure, I'll pay you your 300 bucks, Rook. Well, 
You're going to think you're still dreaming, Rook. Because here's the money I owe you. Well, let's pop the champagne and have a parade. Methy paid me back. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Um, I'll play it straight. I'd love to drink some bubbly with you, Rook, but I'm pretty busy with the case. That's another reason why I stopped by. Ordinarily, Murphy, I'd tell you what to do with your irritating question. But after all you did pay me back, I suppose I can spare you a few moments. Alright, um, maybe I should ask him some questions. Never heard the name in my life. Never heard of Thomas Malloy, huh? How about Sandra? No. Next question. I've seen this man before. This newspaper photo he of Malloy. He came into my pawn shop several weeks ago and pawned an item. Ah. If you want to find out what he pawned, I suggest you find him and ask him. Okay. Tell me about Tyson Matthews. The man in your photo told me his name was uh, Tyson Matthews. Tell me about Nilo. Nilo's run the Ritz for years. He's a pig. But at least he pays cash when he buys something from me. Well, hoity-toity Mr. Nilo. How should I know who that is? Tell me about yourself. You know enough about me. Tell me about Louis Laments. Louis's a good man. He seems to like you quite a bit. I can't figure out for the life of me why. Alright. Enough of the snass. Oh. Uh, oh, Chelsea. If I were a younger man, you wouldn't have a chance with her. Now, I'll admit you have some skills as a PI. It's your social skills that need desperate help. Alright, well. Uh, enough from you. All right, um... Tonight, don't miss Luscious Lucy Love. Okay. something on the ground here. Uh-oh. Moral dilemma. To mail or not to mail? That is the question. <laughs> um... This is a moral dilemma, guys. Should I mail this envelope full of cash to the Bayview Orphanage, or should I pocket the money? I may regret this the next time I'm eating dog food for breakfast, but right now it feels pretty good. I mailed the money. Being the outstanding guy everyone knows Tex Murphy is. Mm, it's all locked up. Oh, Acme Warehouse is closed. Behind the Golden Gate Hotel, the glories of a vegetarian diet, sermon by Reverend Gray. And he 
proclaimed in a mighty voice, Woe be unto ye, eaters of flesh! Cursed are those who partake of the sausage patties and links and sizzling bacon. Cry for forgiveness, ye ingesters of honey-baked ham and all other manner of breakfast. Hey man, what's up? I've heard about Crazy Gary, but we've never formally met. He appears occasionally in some nook of Chandler Avenue, ranting wildly like a space-age Moses strung out on Demerol and bad scotch. And they cried out to him, saying, but these are... You! No, not you, the one in the hat. Have you not come to be healed? Um... Uh, I will use a doggy joke. No, we've already covered that in obedience school. Oh. Not that kind of healed. I speak of the vile grub that rots within your digestive tract. Um, I'm going to maintain some privacy. Listen, let's leave my digestive tract out of this. All I want to do is ask you a few questions. There is only one answer, and that is to partake not of the flesh, especially red meat, and choose instead the bulk and fiber of cereals, fruits, vegetables, and especially grains. Um... I'm gonna resign to fate. Well... We all gotta die of something. Eating a triple chili cheese dog for lunch is as good as any. The lunch of the damned! Those who worship at the altar of beef, veal, and poultry shall reap the vengeance of atherosclerosis! Um, I'm not quite clear on the terminology. Arthur who? Atherosclerosis! The clogging of the arteries. The horrible fate that awaits the ingesters of oleaginous matter. Um... All right, all right. Meat's out. I suppose the next thing to go is booze. Ah, oh, then you too are an imbiber of the blessed potations. Which do you prefer? Rum or vodka? <laughs> um, the official beverage of private investigation. Bourbon, actually. I, myself, prefer a nice, single malt scotch. I'm going to be friendly and agreeable. I like scotch, and I like to ask questions. Are you in the mood to answer some? I'm afraid not. My congregation awaits. Now go and eat meat no more. Sounds like a bottle of good scotch might loosen up Crazy Gary's tongue. I heard that Sal Lucido, the former owner of the Slice of Heaven pizza parlor, kept a first-rate stash of illegally imported booze somewhere on the street. All right, well, that's a project for later, I guess. Chandler Avenue, the warehouse, Ritz Alley, cabin.
David Wright's cabin is out in the middle of nowhere. The place appears to be totally abandoned. The door's unlocked, but as soon as I step inside, I sense something wrong. Like I'm just about to open a carton of milk that's been sitting out in the sun too long. What Wizard says, check out those graphics. Just in case something bad happens. There seems to be a disc in here. Interesting. I bet this will run on my computer back at the office. Right. Um. Nice wad of paper. All right, wad of paper. Another witness uh, to the bizarre events of July 1947 may have been New Mexico Lieutenant Governor Joseph Montoya. According to sources close to Montoya, he visited the military base shortly after the UFO crash and, when speaking to friends soon after, appeared very pale, almost white, shaking, and very, very scared. After consuming half a quart of whiskey... Montoya told friends that he had seen four little men. He described their size, short, skinny-like, facial features, big eyes, the mouth was real small, uh, like cut across a piece of wood, and went on to say that one was alive. While those excerpts of conversation are subjective and impossible to authenticate, they are one of thousands that indicate the fact that there, are, there was indeed a UFO crash, followed by a massive government cover-up. Contributed by A.E. Puzzle of the Month. Uh, fill in the grids. So there are four blue squares, three red squares, three red, three white, three green, and three yellow. No horizontal, vertical, or diagonal row can have more than one square of the same color. Good luck. Cosmic Connection Newsletter 13. All right. So what else is going on in here? Books in the case have really been shoved around. This window looks like it's been broken for a while. I'd guess the cabin's been unoccupied ever since or someone would have covered the hole. Hmm. This must be Mr. Wright, the owner of the cabin. That's an interesting picture. Some sort of ancient temple. Temple of Doom. Nice supply of firewood. Okay. Well, someone must have been here regularly because no one would have live plants if they weren't going to take care of them. These plants are so dried up they must have been dead for a while. Uh, check upstairs, I guess. Hmm. 
A security keypad. I guess whatever's behind the door must be important. Um. Hmm, this door's locked, and I don't see a place for a key. Must be hooked up to some type of keyless entry system. Alright, so he said something about being able to use that disk on my computer. So I guess I could go back to my office and see about that. Potentially. What's in here, though? And this door's jammed shut. Okay, it's just a decorative door. I never went to Chelsea's apartment, did I? I fly my speeder to the Four Gables apartment building where Chelsea lives. Luckily, or maybe not, she doesn't answer the door. For the time being, I can save my groveling apology for later and go back to working on my case. All right. my computer. Rusty the Clown's Fun Book. The scanner brings back some... I picked this book up at Rook's for a quarter. All right. Um... Eat the rich dog food. A little gamey, but not bad for the price. <laughs> oh, man. It's pretty good that um, old Tex eats dog food. So where's my computer? My computer's really neat. Using it is such a treat. It was a... I haven't played my phone again. That was an old song, an old piano practice tune that I played when I was learning to play the piano as a young child. I never really learned how to play the piano, in case you wondered. Computer, computer, computer. I don't think it's like Beetlejuice where if you say it three times it'll appear, but... This is my official front door. Okay, so where is my computer, Mr. Texas Murphy? You said you had a computer I could use to use the CD on.
My new vid phone is essential to my business. Thank goodness it's easy to operate. All right. Ah, computer. I cut this article about Mac Malden out of the newspaper. <laughs> Gives me a good chuckle. I cut this thing out of the paper a few days ago. I've known Mac Malden for years. We've worked together on several cases, but I don't know if we're actually friends. We just help each other out occasionally. Cool. All right. So most of these computer components were purchased at a yard sale. The only one I've been able to get running is the little laptop on the shelf in front of the chair. That's the only computer in the office. Okay. So can I um Let's see. Inventory. Uh, CD from cabin. Use. All right. Okay. So this is the. Um, that's good. Um. Fill in the grid so there are four blue square, four blue squares, three red, three white, three green, and three yellow. No horizontal, vertical, or diagonal rows can have more than one square with the same color. Okay, so I just need to I need to have four blue and three of everything else, and the same color can't be in the same row. All right, sounds easy enough. I guess I have to use the CD. I guess they went back to using CDs in the future. Okay. Um, all right, all unique colors. And then the one here can't be the same. These all need to be different. Right. Um, I think, and then, okay. So that's the code for the, um, that's the code for that keypad thing. Um, just take a picture of it for my personal use. Okay. Um, so what else? 
Next, uh, let me see, stand alone among early, or the Maya stand alone among early Mesoamerican cultures as evidence in the Dresden Code. X, a native book of pictures with explanatory hieroglyphics. Portions of the codex date back thousands of years. Some of the contents, such as tables predicting eclipses and tables on the cycles of the planet Venus, are highly scholarly and would have been meaningful only to trained astronomical experts. Their knowledge is even more amazing in light of the facts that all observ observations of Venus had to be done with the naked eye. The Maya knew with great accuracy the exact solar year, but rather than adjusting their calendar by adding extra days as we do for leap year, they added a correction formula that indicated how many days away from the correct seasonal position the 365-day calendar was at that particular time. The correction formula revealed an extremely accurate notion of solar phenomena. In fact, the Maya year was more accurate than our present Gregorian year, which was not introduced as the standard calendar in Western civilization until 1582, over 1,000 years later. Uh, Michael D. Found's culture was interest, appears seen in a band of outsiders of the vastly superior civilization. Where did the outsiders come from? There is nothing we know that relates this culture to any others in the world. None of the artifacts found to date show evidence of Eastern Hemisphere origins. There, may have, there has been some speculation about the origin of the Maya. One linguistic researcher has pointed out an interesting fact concerning the story of the Tower of Babel in the Old Testament. While the Old Testament was supposedly written well before the Maya flourished, the Mayan word Babel, or Babel, means confusion. Moreover, the Mayan expression meaning to speak in confusion is Babel than. What would the inclusion of Mayan words in languages of Asia and Europe indicate? Well, it's just one word. Is it possible to conclude that within the Mayan context, these existed, in effect, a primitive language from which one other world languages are derived? Or is it just that they happen to share one word? One word does not connote a pattern. Uh, this is every, there is every indication that the early Maya were a tremendously religious people. Their energy in worship and in providing the trappings for worship was unflagging. More than this, religious participation seems to have been the keystone that bound social classes into a cooperative functioning system. The Maya's principal deity was undoubtedly Itzama, the sky god. They believed he was sent to earth by Kunabku, the one god. According to most accounts, Itzama came from the eastern sky. He was known as the great astrologist, lawgiver, and high priest. Mayans also believed that there were four chaks, gods who controlled the world from the four compass points. Mayan ceremonies were directed towards appeasing many different gods, Unayo, the god of death, Ikjel, the goddess of the moon, uh, Kulkukan, the deity of the polar star, Kinchahu, the sun god. Mayans also greatly feared solar eclipses, often committing suicide rather than face the wrath of Zulab. Okay. All right, um, I think I can go back to the cabin now. save the old game again. Okay. I'm going to use my handy dandy uh, photo that I took. Remember that it was this. This, this. All right. I have found this room. Ah, oh, no loading screen. How about that?
Uh, what is this paper here? Paper scattered around appears to have fallen off the bookcase. All right. Paper scattered around. Okay. Some of these floorboards appear to be loose. Oh, Lord. Oh, gross. Someone put some good holes in this guy. There's not much left of him, but I don't think this is Malloy, judging by the hair. Looks more like the guy in the photo downstairs. David Wright. The question is, who's responsible for this? And did they get Malloy, too? All right. Um... These books look like they've been tossed around, like somebody was rifling through them. It's a reel of 16 millimeter film. This reel looks at least a hundred years old. Yeah. Okay, I think this is a projector. Whoa, now there's an antique. There's a projection screen on the other wall. Okay, that makes sense. Pull down the screen. Great. Gotta be some sort of practical joke. Wait a second. Whatever that thing is, it just moved. Ah. Such mystery. I think I remember some sort of alien autopsy film from years ago. But that alien was dead. This thing looks alive. But just barely. Seems to be in a lot of pain. Wonder what happened to him. Alright. Guess they found an alien back then. In them old days of whenever this is. This is just gonna go in a constant loop. Or what? Uh-oh. He doesn't look like he's gonna make it. No. What wizard says, ye old alien. Yep. I wonder if Malloy's disappearance is connected in some way to the contents of this film clip. Military personnel, a live alien. If it wasn't a hoax, this thing could stir things up in a big way. Maybe I shouldn't be getting involved. This is the sort of thing that gets people killed. All right. Well, 
There seems to be some kind of mystery afoot in this mystery adventure game. Who would have thought? But um, I think that is all I'm going to play tonight. Uh, I hope to be back tomorrow evening for some more Tex Murphy, the Pandora Directive. In the meantime, don't do autopsies on any live aliens. <laughs>